This kata came to be known as hangetsu, or half moon, from its semicircular movements of the hands and feet. The crucial points of this kata are the fast slow technique in hand and foot movements coordinated with breathing and sliding the feet in semicircular movements. Changing the angle, let's watch this kata from the side. Let's watch it from behind.
Now, let's listen to the main points explained by Nakayama-sensei. This kata came to be named Hangetsu, or Half Moon, from its sliding semicircular or Half Moon foot movements. By practicing Hangetsu, you can master the very important technique of simultaneous movements of hand and feet coordinated with your breathing. For example, block and strike in harmony with your breathing. Or, block while breathing in and strike while breathing out. As you can see, breathing is a very important basic element of karate movements. Several types of breathing must be mastered. Breathe in sharply and breathe out deeply. Breathe in deeply and breathe out sharply. Breathe in sharply and breathe out sharply. And breathe in deeply and breathe out deeply. Through practicing this kata, you will learn the art of mai, distancing, which is essential for all the martial arts. For example, if the distance between the opponent and you is too great for you to punch or kick, quietly and quickly narrow the distance by moving your pivot leg. Now, let's take a look at an example. With these points in mind, let's watch it once again.
Let's watch it again from behind.
Now, let's watch it movement by movement along with Nakayama Sensei's explanation. Uchiuke, or block from inside outward, while breathing in. Counterpunch, while breathing out. Move your hands and feet simultaneously. While making a one-knuckle fist, bring your right hand towards the right side of your chest. Thrust the left one-knuckle fist forward, align your fists, and pull them back to the former position. Cross both hands in front of the chest, raise them, and assume a mountain posture. Then, block downwards to the sides with both hands. After performing both middle and lower level hand blocks and a middle level block, pull your elbow back and turn your wrist over. Switch. Rotate your hips to the left. Raise your left leg high while turning back. Making a half moon arc, bring down the little toe to the floor. Cross your legs slowly and quietly. Shift the body to the right leg. Raise your left fist strongly and kick simultaneously. Strike with a left back fist. Then, swing your left fist in a big motion in harmony with your waist movement. After striking, move onto a block with palm heels brought together slowly. Let's watch it once again from the very beginning.
In this kata, sliding of the feet in semicircular movements is always done towards the inside of the opponent's feet. In this way, one can easily destroy the opponent's balance through attacking into his inside. The semicircular foot sliding movements are most effective for close in attacks. MP means flying swallow. In this kata, after a rising strike to the upper level, one jumps into the opponent while grasping and pulling him in. This resembles the flight of a swallow, sometimes high, sometimes low, suddenly reversing directions. Let's watch it from the side at a different angle.
Let's watch it from behind. Now, let's listen to the main points explained by Nakayama-sensei. What you've just watched are the most important movements of MP. In this kata, after an upper-level rising punch, punch downward and reverse directions. This kata is suggestive of a swallow flying away, doing a backward somersault and then reversing directions. Now, let's watch it once again. The most important position in this series of actions is the crossed leg stance. Bending your ankles and knees as deeply as possible, shift your full body weight to one leg, cross your left leg behind your right leg and maintain a balanced pose. This position is very strong with your hips directly below your body and your weighted leg fixed solidly. But if the hips are pulled backward, this stance becomes very weak. Now, let me explain the series of movements. This is not an ordinary technique, but a trap for your opponent. The purpose of this action is to become deliberately off guard in order to draw out your opponent's attack and to counterattack when you are in a stalemate with him, just staring at each other. In this kata, jump high in order to avoid having your legs swept away with a staff. Do not just jump high, but hold your knees close to your chest before you jump. Watch this. With these points in mind, let's watch it once again.
Let's watch it from behind. Let's watch it movement by movement along with Nakayama Sensei's explanation. Turn your head to the right. Bring your right fist in front of your right thigh and your right knee close to your left heel. Perform movements one to four at the same speed. The method of the rising punch is to punch slightly upwards while twisting your torso slightly to the left. After opening your right fist, pull it strongly as if you were grasping something and pulling it in. Bringing your right wrist just above your left arm, incline your torso slightly to the left. Six. 
Sie hat's. Move your left leg backward and shift your weight to your right leg. Move your left knee in front of the right side of your chest and swing it to the left in a big arc. Raise your left hand high. Tracing a semicircle, turn your left hand to the left. The movements of both hands and feet should be slow and simultaneous. Swinging your right arm in a big circle, strike it firmly against your left palm. Change sword hands block simultaneously with the change of foot positions. In movements 21 and 22, turn the hips as quickly as possible and execute techniques like those in movement 1. Using Geiran Barai, downward block, and Agezuke, rising punch, jump one step forward. After jumping, assume a cross leg stance and shift your full weight to your right leg. Twist your right wrist and push it diagonally forward, gradually applying power. Then, bring your right hand in front of your right hip and push it slowly upward in front of your right shoulder, gradually applying power. Push your left hand down slowly toward the front of your left hip. From movements 31 to 33, slowly push up and down with both of your hands as if you were squeezing something. Bring your right fist downward from the front of your left shoulder. Pulling both of your legs up high close to the chest, jump high and twist to the left. On landing, assume a back stance. Trace a large semicircle over your head with both hands. A rising punch Jumping in, reversing directions, and a downward block are repeated in this kata. In these actions, 
be sure to assume a cross leg stance with your weight on the right leg after jumping. The success of this kata's performance depends on how you pull your hips back when you move on to the next stage of reversing directions and the downward block. Let's watch it once again from the very beginning. Okay. 
This kata should be performed lightly and quickly. When you are in a stalemate with your opponent, you should learn the tactic of becoming deliberately off guard in order to draw his attack.